now on to uh, Pete and Jeremy. Go for it. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, hopefully, the audio is going to be okay. It's a little windy out here. Um, yeah, we're happy to be here. Beautiful day. We're over in uh, Felton down at S SLV. Um, it's a beautiful spot, beautiful track. Anyway, so run like a pro is kind of what we called this. And it's whenever you watch a really good runner run, they make it look effortless. They make it look like, um, like they're running smooth and effort, an effortless, uh, kind of, uh, look to them. And which is the exact opposite for, um, the way a lot of people look when they run. Um, some of you maybe feel like that, like you, you're laboring and you're, you're kind of fighting against yourself. And so today what we're going to try to do is kind of give you some tips to hopefully make that a little bit, make your running a little smoother, a little more efficient. Um, as a triathlon coach, swim coach, you know, it's same thing in the water. You know, we're working on being efficient. The more efficient you are, the more energy you're going to save. Okay. Jeremy's had the luxury of coming to my track workouts since he was zero. Okay, he's 15 years old now, and he's got a pretty good stride because he's listened probably too many times to what you guys are going to hear today. Um, I got to give props to Coach Bobby McGee, uh, USA Triathlon Coach, uh, Director uh, of Running. He's the guy that basically taught me. I grew up a swimmer, water polo player, um, and I, I didn't know until I got into triathlon that I was actually a pretty good runner. And Bobby McGee taught me a lot of the teaching methods of, of, of what to teach and what to look for. And so that's a lot of what I'm doing today is, is kind of giving you, you know, the tips that I've learned from the best guys in the sport. And, and um, you know, luckily Jeremy at a young age was able to get that and, and he's got a really beautiful stride. And, and so um, we're gonna have him run. He's gonna do all the demos today, the drill, the drill demos. Um, and some strides, and then and then I'm going to have him run a quarter at the end. Um, so the first thing I usually say in a clinic like this is, has has anybody ever taught you how to run? And in my camp, some of the smart smart aleck kids might say, "Yeah, you did last year." Uh, mm. But growing up, I don't remember anybody ever really teaching me how to run. It was like you just went out and ran, and so. I think that's what happens a lot is people just go out and run and they think they're running, you know, uh, but they don't really know what to do to make themselves, you know, run faster or run more efficient. Um, when I first started racing, I didn't know really the, the key tips to think about when I ran. I knew I was a decent runner, but I had a guy tell me in a race once, he said, lean forward. And, and I, in, in that race, in that moment, I, I, I heeded that advice and I leaned forward and I actually felt like I was faster. And from then on, I started running faster. And so one of the big tips I'm going to tell you today is lean forward. Because if you're back and you're, especially if you are back on your heels, one of the things we look at is how long is your foot on the ground? If you're heel striking, your foot is on the ground for a long time, okay? Much longer than if you're hitting more of a mid to four foot strike, okay? Think of a ball bouncing on the ground. It's going to bounce, and you want, your, you want your foot to bounce off the ground, okay? If you hit the heel first, okay, if you hit the heel first, your foot's going to be on the ground much longer, okay? So that's one of the key things that we look at when we're observing you know when you're and trying to get you to improve okay so the heel how, where the heel strike is or where the foot strike is sorry um and i'm going to go through a little in more detail exactly how we, we go about trying to get you to think about it um a couple of the other things that you that you when you're efficient is you don't see much of this up and down movement Okay. An efficient runner is very smooth. Okay. I like to call it run, you know, run smooth, run tall, run smooth. Um, it's because you want to be a nice upright posture, 
you want to have that forward lean, okay, but you don't want a lot of loping. You don't want a lot of up and down. That's called vertical oscillation. There's been books written on it. You can look up vertical oscillation and you can go into much more detail on to what I'm talking about, but it's, it involves your cadence. Okay, I'm gonna go into cadence a little bit today. Um, but what I'm trying to do today is just give you an overview and then show you some drills that are gonna help you take something away and then go and practice, okay? Because just me telling you how to run correctly is not gonna do it. You're gonna have to go and practice and you're gonna have to practice and practice and practice. And what Bobby McGee likes to say is he coaches some Kenyans, probably some of the best runners in the sport. They work these drills every week, a few times a week. Okay, and they're the best in the sport. So if you don't do drills and you don't do them right, then you're probably not gonna see changes, okay? The thing about changing your running stride and changing the way you run is it does, your foot hits the ground differently, so you may find it a little bit, you know, you may feel it in your calves a little more, you may feel it in your feet a little more, your ankles, so, uh, the other thing I was going to talk to briefly was the thing about running and being a good runner is you need a good pair of shoes. Okay. I would go get a good pair of running shoes. Um, go to your local shop if you have one and, and, and wear the shoe and, and try to run in it because those shoes are made for different types of feet. Um, but the shoe is key. Okay. If you get injured, more than likely, the first thing I look at is your shoe, okay? So the other thing I look at is what, what kind of surface do you run on? If you're running a lot on pavement or concrete, that's very hard on the body and that, that'll lead to injuries, okay? If you're in, they can be in your low back, they can be in your hip, they can be in your knee, they can be all up and down your leg and a lot of lower leg stuff, okay? Um, the other thing you need to think about is your flexibility. Runners get tight and you need flexibility. So, so one of the things I'm gonna have Jeremy show you is a couple of active stretches once we get started. Um, and, then, and then he's gonna go into some of the drill, okay? Um, the other thing about... Uh, Just to clarify, Pete, so we've got, um, we've got maintain, make sure that you're not bobbing the head so far. We've got maintain a little bit of a forward lean with some good posture. Um, in terms of the, and I'm excited to get to some of the dynamic drills here in a second. So. In terms of the, uh, the shoe, I know we could probably spend quite some time talking about that, but is there any uh, specific, like people have, like there's, there's tons of padding on ones. There's the, there's the, I forget what they're called, or orcas or hokas or something like that. Then you got the minimal shoes. So yeah, I'm, we I'm wearing the hoka right now. So this is a hoka and this is, it, this one's made for, it's got about a five degree drop. And, and I had a, an Achilles heel problem for a while, and I started running in this shoe, and my, my, that problem went away. Jeremy likes to run. This is his trainer, and he's running in the, the Asics uh, Kayano. Mm -hmm. Asics Kayano is a great shoe. Um, it's a very supportive shoe, um, and you're not going to go wrong with Asics or Hoka, but you do want to get the shoe that fits your foot the best. Um, if, if you have a podiatrist, you can talk to them about, you know, what shoe might be best for you if you pronate, if you supinate. Um, but you need to really, once you find a shoe you like, it's good to stick with it. Um, Jeremy runs and like tonight, today when he does his um, quarter, he'll run in the spikes. Yeah. And those are, that's a racing shoe. This, this shoe, this is actually a triathlon racing shoe. It's actually a, a speed transition shoe. And it's a very lightweight um, shoe from Pierce, sports is uh, one of my sponsors but a very lightweight and it's very quick transition because you don't have to waste okay um, just to that you just got to go probably try out a couple of different shoes figure out what really fits your foot best yeah. that's why i say it's hard to buy a shoe unless you know what shoe you're buying it's hard to buy a shoe online and have it delivered and then because you don't you're buying it sight unseen and if you don't put it on a lot of times you put on a shoe and you go out and run in it and it feels kind of wonky it doesn't feel right and so you know immediately you don't want that shoe. Mm. So you're going to save yourself a lot of hassle of shipping, shipping shoes back and forth. You're also going to help out the local, uh, hopefully the local, uh, you know, businesses as well. Shop. Exactly. So, 
um, we like we like to do that. But um, any other anything else, real quick? I'm gonna we're gonna go into. So I did. I talked to you a little bit about the. Oh, the other thing is, if you are injured and you actually have a running injury, you need to take time off. There's too many runners will go out and run while injured and they never get better or they continue to run in pain. And I've learned, trust me, I, I've done it. We've all done it. You know, as you get older, that, that seems to, you get a little more of those little injuries. But as you're younger, you get through them pretty quick. But just take a few days off, take a week off and get back to where you're not in pain and then you can get back to really running, okay? So the biggest thing I can tell somebody that's, that's got an injury is rest, okay? Yeah, you, you might be able to ride the bike, you go swim, you know, do something else, you know, but, but don't keep running because it's not gonna get better if you keep running. You may have to change your shoes. That's when you may wanna go talk to a podiatrist, uh, physical therapist, okay? Uh, okay, the other thing that, and we can go all day on pace and, and what type of speed you're gonna run and what, and if you're gonna run in hills and long runs and tempo runs, that's all for a different day because that all goes into, the, into running and how you're gonna improve, okay? Um, but the biggest thing I want you to know is don't run if you're injured, okay? Um, especially if you know it's a running injury. <laughs> okay, so Jeremy's warmed up, he's ready to go, and I'm gonna have him show you a couple of uh, quick dynamic stretches. Dynamic stretches are, let's go over to the, over here. You got, get, you wanna hang on to something, and the hip swing, yeah, over here. Okay, so he's gonna just kind of swing his leg and you're just basically trying to kind of increase the range of motion a little bit. We call these hip swings. You just kind of roll through, roll through. I go about 10 to 20 swings on each side, okay? You, so that's a good one to kind of open up your hips. Um, another good one is for the calf. You're gonna press, press down on the calf. Uh, press the flat leg back. Yeah, there's a few different ways. And then I want you to do the active calf stretch with both feet back. So both, yeah, right there. Then go quick, 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 toe down, toe down. That's an active calf stretch. It's just stretching the calves out, okay? You put a lot of load on your calves when you're running, especially when you're leaning forward and you're running closer on your, more on your forefoot, okay? Another good one is just grab the back of the, grab the, uh, yeah. Little quad stretch. That one's more of a static stretch, not so much of an active stretch. Um, okay, we run through these pretty quickly. Now, in order to, I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna have Jeremy kind of show you like keys that I look at, okay? So when you're running, you want your arms right here, okay? So imagine this, this is, the, this is Bobby McGee, okay? You've got on a glass tutu, all right? Glass goes all the way around your waist. Your arms drive this way, front to back, but they never go below your, they never go below that tutu. They're always right here. Doing these drills, you always have your arms up over the, over the glass tutu, okay? So it's right here. Your hands are relaxed, okay? Hands are relaxed, never a clenched fist, always relaxed. All right. Now imagine Jeremy's got a piece of glass cutting him in half. Okay. You never want to see that arm come this way. All right. Sometimes I see people running down the street like this. That's inefficient. This way is okay. Okay. Driving behind you is okay. Not too much out here. You don't want the arms out here. You want them driving back. Okay, you're leaning forward. The key about the leaning forward, okay, I'm gonna have Jeremy lean forward. Don't worry, we're quarantined together, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's leaning forward, okay, from his ankle, so let your, yeah, right there, Anna. So he's leaning forward from his ankles. If I say lean forward, I don't mean lean forward like this. It's not from the waist. It's lean forward, okay? So go, one good way to kind of practice that is just kind of take a step 
you know, lean and step forward. But your whole body's leaning forward. When you're running, okay, your momentum's carrying you, and so you're able to kind of keep up with yourself. The forward lean comes from the ankles, though. Okay. So the next, and this is key, the next thing, you're in that forward lean. Imagine Jeremy's covered by a glass cylinder. Okay. He's on a, he's kind of got a leaning glass cylinder though. All right. So while he's running, his foot's kicking out here, but it's never kicking out in front of his knee. He's running here and his foot's always dropping down. Dog in place. If you jog in place, you're gonna you go all the way up to your butt. See where his foot lands. His foot lands right below his knee. Okay? You don't want that foot to drive and land forward. If you land forward, that's called a heel strike. When you heel strike, your foot is on the ground for a much longer period of time than if you are doing the right below the knee and rebounding off. Okay? So you, you don't want a heel strike. Heel strike is putting on the brakes with every step. Okay? You don't want to put on the brakes with every step. Okay? That's defeating the purpose. If you do that, you'll be one of those guys that lopes, okay, up and down. You're also putting a lot of strain and stress into your, to that hip, into that knee, into that ankle, because you're taking the impact, okay? When you glide, when you run more efficiently, you're, you're gliding, you're, you're not get, taking such a beating, okay? That's why it's key to be, work on your flexibility, okay? Your calves will get tight doing the, like after these drills, they will get tight. Um, so you need to stretch, roll, stretch, okay? And just be aware. Hills will also really get your uh, calves tight and Achilles. So you have to, if you have a calf, tight calf or Achilles, don't, don't, do, don't run hills. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to, to a series of some walking drills, okay? All right, so first, and you, sh you need to do these drills first, the walk series, then then the skip series, because this is how you kind of get your body used to that feeling of when you hit the ground, okay? And you're, and you're, you're trying to kind of adjust your foot strike is basically what we're looking at. So Jeremy's gonna walk, I'm gonna have him do, if he does, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have him do a, we'll call it the uh, high toe walk, okay? So he's just gonna walk on his toes, down and back, notice his arms are at 90 degrees. Okay, so he's walking on his toes. The one thing, don't worry about what people think if you're looking kind of funny because you're walking on your toes, it's okay. Okay, so that's the high toe walk. That'll get you into the, the mode of, of walking onto that more of that forefoot. Okay, now he's gonna do a high knee and then come down onto the toes. So he's going high knee and he's coming down onto that. I call it toes, but it's more like mid to forefoot. So you can go more on the forefoot if you want. Okay. So he's, but notice where he's landing. He's landing right below his knees. Okay. So he's right below his knees. Arms are in. All right. Good. Okay. Now he's going to go, he's going to do a kick out in the back. He's going to do a toe high kick out in the back. So kind of like a butt kicker, but walk and land to the toes. See, once they, when you walk, it's easy to want to go to your heel. Okay. You got to kind of force yourself to walk on the toes or the, more of the forefoot. So Pete, a lot of these drills are getting people used to getting that foot to land below the knee, but also getting them used to uh, just the impact of more of a forefoot or midfoot strike, correct? Yes. And most people will be more of a midfoot. Not every once in a while you'll see a toe runner. And for these clinics and stuff, I say I, I call it you know, land on your toes. 
the walking is a little easier, but for the most part, it's, it's basically getting off your heels. So it may be more of a midfoot. And if you watch, you know, a lot of runners run more mid to forefoot, and they're not necessarily on their toes. It's, uh, it's more of a, that's kind of what a key to kind of get you to focus on that. But start with the walk series first, okay? So now I want you to just go do a, do a fast, a, a build, build slow to fast, down and back. Just walk, yeah, walk. And then do, yeah, do the toe walk. Okay. And the arms right there, good. The arms are driving back. Everything's okay, they're all driving back, okay? And the arms are here, you're not below the waist, all right? So now we're gonna go into some skips. Okay, the skip series, um, if anybody's ever skipped, you just do a basic skip. It's a great way to get you into that, what I'm talking about, more into that kind of forefoot, okay? So just do a basic skip down and back. Okay, so I do have one that I, I call it the entry level skip for somebody that doesn't know how, but for today, I'm just kind of assuming you know how to skip. Um, the next one is called the kick out skip. So he's, what he's gonna do, he's gonna kick out. Okay, go ahead, kick it out. And then he's kicking straight down. So his foot is landing straight beneath, right below his knee. Okay, that's where you want your foot to land. Okay, he's kicking out, kicking down, kicking out, kicking down, good. All right, so now he's gonna really emphasize that high knee up, and then he's gonna really emphasize that kick down. So go. Kick it out, kick it down, kick it out, kick it down, good. Good. You will see every runner in the Olympics doing these before their race. Okay? You'll see a lot of professional baseball players doing this before they go out on, and, and compete. Um, Pete, okay. what exactly is that drill helping uh, someone work on? So basically what you're trying to think about there is you want your foot to land below your knee. You don't want your foot to land out here. So what that does is it's kick it out, kick it down, kick it out, kick it down. So I call it like a Russian dance, but it's, it basically is working on getting you to land that foot below the knee. And you wanna land it below the knee and more on that forefoot. So you're not landing on the heel. I'll have him do it one more time. Kick it out, and down. So he's coming directly below the knee, okay? And so it just overemphasizes all these drills. All the drills will do will overemphasize kind of what you're gonna look for when you're actually going out and doing it. I mean, they're, you wanna do them right though. You don't wanna do them Swimming is the same thing. There's a lot of different drills you can do. There's a purpose for doing them, but you want to do the drills right. Okay? Um, but all these, especially that one, it's meant to, to work on that coming down right below the knee. Um, you want to try to hit your forefoot. Um, now I'm going to have him do a backward skip. Okay, this one just works a push away, push away, and it works on pushing off and He's now, now he's just working on he's kicking the heel up in the back and he's and he's pushing off that forefoot. Okay, and these are more kind of body awareness drills, but they also work on that. If you see how he goes, how he how he's driving off, uh, do the uh, do go circle skip forward and then come back, circle skip back. Okay, this next one's called circle skip and he does a little spin. And I have him go one way, then the other. And then coming back, he's gonna do it reverse. And he's gonna spin. And on a track, I always say, try to stay in one lane. You shouldn't be using more than one lane to do that, okay? Again, it's body awareness. It's focusing on the, uh, you're always feeling your feet, okay? Um, now I'm gonna have him do kind of more of a, a bounding skip where he's gonna really kind of drive and, and drive it up. This is more, this is a little more aggressive for say a track runner, but now we'll go into like a, see how he drives up off of that 
okay? He's driving off of that forefoot. You can see how his body lean is. You know, he's got nice lines. Um, okay, that. Some of them, Pete, in addition to kind of building this body awareness, you know, like the particular bounding drill right there, the backward skip, it's also kind of working on not just the the leg coming forward, but but what's happening with the leg coming back. Like that backward skip, I really like that because it's it's focusing on the quick of the foot, the exactly. work on the back, correct? You got it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, and there, you know, I know we're going through these pretty fast, but you want to spend some time. Usually I have my my group does them like, you know, they'll go about a hundred yards for each for each drill. Okay. And you want to try to, you know, go through the drills. You know, and they're kind of, we kind of use them as a warm up. Okay, they're a great way to warm up. Okay, the next little series of drills we're going to do are for cadence. Okay, and cadence becomes real important in your overall, you know, you know what, how many steps per minute you, you take when you run is key to becoming a better runner. Okay, I'll tell you a little secret when I have to, I have him do a couple of these drills. Okay, so we're going to start this one. First one's going to be pitter patter. So he's going to he's going to do just a pitter patter. Okay, on this you got to keep your head up. He's got the arms, drive those arms front to back, and he's just on. I call it on the toes. He's on the forefoot, and he's just going really quickly. You know, pitter patter, pitter patter. Okay, quick, 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 quick. Okay, pitter patter. He's upright. His head is upright. A lot of these drills, people want to look down at their feet. You got to keep your head up. Okay, I'm gonna go through a little checklist after I finish with this little part and tell you what to kind of key on uh, when you're when you're running. Okay, the next one he's gonna do is called pitter patter, and then he's gonna go right into a high knee skip. Okay, so this one go go pitter patter into high knee, quick 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 quick, and then high knee, up 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 up. Okay, that one's, and then same thing coming back pitter patter into high knee. And then go high knee, lean forward, lean forward. Think about those arms, driving the arms front to back. Okay. Uh, then the last one in this series is we're going to go pitter patter, pitter patter into the high knee, and then he's going to run it out. And he's going to really overemphasize the run out and the forward lean. Okay. Go pitter patter, quick, quick, high knee, lean forward. Now run it out. Okay, good. Look at Jeremy's heel kick, okay? A good runner, elite runner runs with a nice heel kick. They're kicking all the way up to their rear end. Watch how he does that without really thinking about it. That's one cue that as a coach, if you look at it, somebody not, if, if their heel kick isn't coming up too much, they could potentially be, uh, you know, they're not getting the most out of their stride, that's for sure. And um, on the so the cue, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have Jeremy, he's gonna do a couple of uh, strides on the grass, but before, while he's getting, he's gonna take his shoes off, I'm gonna actually do, have him do it barefoot. Um, the cues you wanna look at, or that I look at when you're running, um, oh, I gotta give you the secret, sorry. Uh, your cadence when you run is important. Elite runners, run at 180 cadence, okay? That's 180 steps per minute, okay? You can, in during your run, you can look at your watch and you can either count for a whole minute. I usually count one leg, but we get, if you go 90, okay? If you count one leg for 30 seconds, it's 90. If you count one leg for 15 seconds, it's 45. Your goal, when you're, uh, when you're trying to, Actually, when you're, I'm sorry, I mixed that one up. It's 30 seconds, you count one leg, and you should have 45, okay, or 90, both, okay. Um, your goal is 180 per minute, all right? When you're out on a run, you can, you can just start counting your steps, count them for either 30 seconds and times by two, um, or, or count them for a whole minute, okay? But your goal is to try to get to that 180. All right. I find it's easier to count one foot and just do 30 seconds and double it, so it should be 90. If you're under that, if you're under 90, 
you're probably overstriding a little bit. You could be loping. You could be bounding. All right. Um, heel striking. All right. A, a lot of the cues we look at is what's happening with the head. A good elite runner will run very smooth. Okay. They don't run. They don't bounce up and down. A lot of wasted energy if you're driving yourself up and not forward. Okay. You want to drive yourself forward and not up. Okay. So. So that's one of the things you want to do while you're out on the run. It doesn't matter if you're 5'2 or 6'5, it's still 180 steps per minute. All right? So get that. You can, and you can test it anytime. Okay? Room again, one foot, uh, 45, uh, 45 on one side, 30 seconds. And then on the. You want to be over, you want to be over 45 or more than 180, more than under. Okay? Um, Real quick on the okay. when you're doing that, I mean that's something. Um, you said Jeremy's obviously got a really nice one. That's typically as he's going faster and sprinting. That's when the heel kick is coming up more, right? So if I'm doing yes, that that's true. The faster you run, the higher your heel kick. But I'm you'll sure. still see a heel kick come up um, unless you're. I mean, unless you're just shuffling, you know. As some of us have done Kona before, we call it the Kona shuffle. You're, you're not getting much heel kick. <laughs> but you're going to find that that heel kick will come up more in the faster you go. That's for sure. Um, okay, so the checklist that I go through, you know, is, is you, you, when you're running, everything wants to be efficient, okay? So if, if you're – I go head to toe. If you're running, and I see people out there all the time like this, ah, like, you know, and they look, they just look like they're in pain, okay? And their mouths like that. Okay, so first of all, they need to relax their face. They should be running just like, you know, relaxed, relax the face, okay? The next thing I look at is the shoulders. A lot of triathletes, especially, they, they come up here and they run tight. They run up here like this. You gotta relax, and, and I'm, it's a subtle, it's from here to here, okay? It's not, you know, it's, but you know that you'll know it when you see it. You gotta relax the shoulders, okay? So you relax the face, relax the shoulders, okay? The arm swing, the arm swing here above that tutu and not, not across. They come drive front to back, not out here, okay? Back, everything going back is okay. That cylinder that I don't want you to kick through, it's okay to kick it out the back, all right? You can drive your arm behind you. You can drive your leg behind you, just as long as it comes down right below the knee, okay? So you've got, you look at your face, you look at your shoulders, arm swing, you look at your hands. A lot of times I see people running with fists. Relax, okay? Relax the arms, okay? The arm swing should be, if you're a distance runner, you're gonna just be running kind of like, you know, just easy on the hands. If you're sprinting, then you might end up, you know, kind of, you see some sprinters running like this. But otherwise, it's pretty relaxed. Okay. And then it's the arms are here, swinging this way, not across, not across, coming front to back, your forward lean. Okay. So, but everything upper body is, is relaxed. Okay. Relax the face, relax the shoulders, relax the hands, fix the wrist. A lot of times I see people running like this. Okay. You don't need to run like that. Run this way. Okay. Fix the wrist. All right, elbows in a lot of times, and just little cues. I'll yell at people on like on the track. I'll say elbows in. You know they may run by like this, and that usually means they're sucking up their shoulders a little bit, and then they drive out. Okay, you want to keep them here. All right. So there's a lot of little things to look at. Um, then the head up and down is the other key thing that we can see, and knowing what your cadence is. Okay, those are key things. I'm gonna have Jeremy do. Uh, he's going with socks on, probably because it's hot. Um, but the barefoot is, you know, if it, have any of you read the Born to Run book? Okay, Born to Run, like, you know, it really glorified barefoot running for a little while. Which, you know, barefoot running is great for for some things, but it can also lead to injury. So what I have, what I want you to do when you barefoot run is barefoot running. 
it forces you to run the way you were meant to run. It forces you to run more on your forward and mid to fourth foot. It, you will not run on your heel barefoot. Okay. So to, to in order to do that, actually I'm gonna have Jeremy just jog down and back. Go jog down and back. So and when you do this, he's just I want him to feel his feet. You want to feel your feet when you're jogging. Okay, so he's just jogging and he's you know he's got good posture. And on that one, you just feel the feet. That forces you into the way you want to run. The problem people have with the barefoot thing is they take it too far. You don't need to run too much. I might have him do one loop around the grass, and then I'm gonna have him do a couple strides, okay? So why don't we go do a couple strides? We'll do, go like maybe 20 meters, 20 yards. Um, and the strides are a great way to either before your workout, if you're gonna do a speed workout, you wanna do some strides before, before you race, maybe a couple short strides. Um, or afterwards, at the end of a workout, you may also do some strides. Okay, go ahead. Now, if you notice, you can't really tell because he's going so fast, but his head didn't move at all. His head is very flat, okay? An inefficient runner is going to be doing this, okay? Nice. Um, let's do one more. So he's... So the strides help him, you know, he's he's getting into that race mode. He's getting into that, you know, he's just going to, yeah, this helps get his heart rate up a little bit. Ready, go. And you really, really emphasize that leg kick, um, the, the kick up in the back. You saw that. He's kicking all the way up above his rear. All right, we're gonna go, I'm gonna have him run one lap around. Hopefully the video, you'll be able to see his head position. Okay, and we'll get a little time on him. Uh, sub, sub one minute is a sub four minute mile pace. Jeremy unfortunately had, got skunked out of his season this year because of the whole COVID thing. And one of his goals was to try to get get that mile time down into the low four minutes. So uh, one of his workouts is doing eight quarters, trying to hold 60 seconds or under. Okay, that's what Roger Bannister did uh, before he ran the sub four minute mile. So just for fun, I'm gonna have him run one quarter, see if, uh, see if we can get it on, on the video. You may or may not be able to see him real well, but we'll see what kind of time he can throw down. Um, Sherry, if you just move it super slow uh, across, we should be able to catch him a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll get him at least going and, and maybe across on the other side of the track. And then I'll, uh, I'll call out his time. Um, and I'll kind of, let's go from the top. Okay. Yeah. All right, so he threw his spikes on. So he does have his spikes on. And you can look at that leg kick. But also look at the head position, the body lean. He's upright. Can't see him. Wow. He has a really beautiful stride. And if you see his foot strike, you can tell he's not, he's, he's landing right below his knee. Now look at his head. He's, he's got very little oscillation. He's very smooth. All right, he's, uh, he's at 42 seconds right now, so that's pretty darn fast. He has not been doing a bunch of speed stuff because of the season being canceled, so we'll see what kind of, but he looks good. 58 laps, a 58. Ah, Pete, sorry, can you uh, unmute yourself there? I got the wrong button. Sherry, can you got it? Yeah. Hear me? Oh, I was giving you the whole blow by blow, didn't no, you? No, it just came on. Okay. Oh, we got that. So 58 flat. So the time again was? Uh, he went 58 
point zero six. Uh, for, so that is good. <laughs> that is a sub four minute mile pace. He just has to do that three more times, which is his goal in the next two years while he's still in high school. Woo. Uh, tomorrow they they are doing it. Tomorrow there there are a couple guys that are going for it. High schoolers that are running a quote virtual mile, and they're trying to break uh, be the eleventh high school to ever do it, but. They're doing that tomorrow. Um, all right. That's it. Um, that's how you become a better runner. <laughs> I think Do you have any questions for Jeremy or me? Um, and I'll see if we can answer them real quick. Yeah, I appreciate it, Pete. So a um, couple things. I'm going to, and then I'm going to, I'm going to stop our recording here in a sec, but uh, and then we can do some of the Q and a. So if, if you guys are watching, uh, pop any questions that you want uh, answered on to uh, on the, the Facebook post there, and I will get to them now. But it sounds like, Pete, a lot of it is, you know, and this is what I remember, is you, you're coaching a lot of people to be more mindful of their running, like what they're doing, how their body's moving in space. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people, they they assume that they already know how to run, right? Yeah. One of those that's, why, that's why I always start with, has anybody ever taught you how to run? That's so true. I remember uh, it's like anything else. I remember doing some kickboxing back in the day, and it was like the same instructor was like, do you know how to box? I'm like, well, probably, yeah, you know, and then it was like I found out I knew absolutely nothing about boxing. Um, yeah. Very similar to running. And I've been in fitness for a long time, and so when I went to see, I think I know how to run, but obviously I'm something up because I keep injuring myself, so um, I want to bring attention to that for everybody is like all those – it's doing those drills over and over that bring how you run and how and really it's awesome stuff. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah, I think uh, for me, something that I've learned actually is that the biggest part of running is just consistency, and you can say that with anything really. But for running, just motivating yourself and getting yourself out there every single day is probably the most important. Yes, it's super important to have rest days. You know, I take one rest day every single week. On, the, on Sunday, I get my day off. But it's very important just to get yourself out there, even if it's just for a few miles, just getting your legs, like, loosened up, you know, preparing for a bigger run the next day or something. Just super important to make sure that you motivate yourself out and get that run in because that's the only way you're going to improve. The drills help you, but that's with the consistency of running every single day, you know, and being really dedicated to the sport. Thanks, Jeremy. I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going on the recording so we can get some of these Q&A. Um, so one thing is, what would you, is there any specific advice or recommendations you would have for people that are just starting to do, like, do their running? Like they're most – they're they're not really big into running but they eventually want to do their first like 5k uh, the first thing is get a good pair of shoes um, get a good pair of shoes and then you just want to start slow the way I have most of my beginner runners start is they run walk because um, it's hard to, I can't just tell somebody to go out and run three miles if they've never run or if they don't run but they could walk, you know, a mile. And so what I will have them do is maybe, you know, run, jog for a minute and then walk for a minute and then jog for a minute and then walk. And then slowly, you know, and depending on their condition and depending on their background, you know, you kind of go from there. But basically the walk jog is a way to go. And then from there, then you start looking at form, you know, and then you, you know, you've got to start basically building up you know what are your goals are you is your goal to run a 5k you know it's like okay so you want to build to that distance okay a 5k you know a lot of people's goals they want to run a marathon it's like okay that's it that's a longer term goal you got to start in slow like i always say do the 5k first you know then do the 10k and build your way up um that that's the smartest way to go uh a lot of people will try to accelerate that whole process and, and may or may not achieve their goal. Um, 
but for somebody just starting, just doing the run walk is a key way to get going. Yeah, to go with that, um, a lot of my friends are just starting running too because there's a lot of time of, time on our hands now. And uh, I'm telling them that it takes two weeks of like really motivating yourself and getting yourself out there. Like every other day, probably, probably around two weeks to really start feeling comfortable during the run. Like it's the hardest to learn like the just the first two weeks of running. So once you get past that two weeks of training and you get that little base down, then the runs start feeling super more comfortable and it'll just get easier from there. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And, uh, you know, I know to that point, I remember training Pete with you and it was I was a heel striker by by nature, which is probably all that ground reaction force is probably jacking up my. Um, I remember changing to more of that four foot and to that to that two week point you just said, Jeremy, my calves were on fire for like yeah. two weeks. <laughs> until they yeah, got I, those I, that's why I warned you when. Anytime you're making adjustments, but you have to give it time, you know, give it time, keep, you know, work on the flexibility, you know, and the strength. We didn't even talk about your core strength and, and other, you know, the, the, you know, the stuff you can do in the gym. It, it really is beneficial and, and will make the whole experience better. You will get stronger. Um, you need a good, strong core. Uh, a lot of older runners complain about back pain. You know, it's probably because their core strength isn't that good. Um, so, you know, you can, you can definitely help yourself out, you know, by, you know, working on the flexibility, working on the strength, you know, you've got to, you, know, you want to be a good runner, you got to run, um, you know, and then, and then you start working in the, you know, with a coach, maybe, oh, I, I need, you know, my, my tempo day, I need my hill day, I need my long run day, you know, and so there's a whole method to that, that whole process. Um, Jeremy's a miler, so his his like speed stuff is going to be shorter, faster stuff. Like quarters are, you know, quarters maybe 800s be almost the longest that he does. Um, does a lot of 400s, 300s, 200s. Um, that's it because he's a miler. Somebody who's a 5K, 10K, they're gonna they're gonna be a little different. Somebody who's a half marathon, marathon's gonna be a, a lot more different. Uh, more different. So anyway, it, it kind of is based on. Your plan is based on your goals. Your plan is based on your ability. Um, at least that's the way I do it. You know? No, that's great. That's fantastic. And so, and one of the questions, this is the beat. Sam learns about it. Here, walk over here. Uh, you cut out, you cut out on it. The, the track you're at, where is that again? It's in Felton? Uh, yeah, we're in Felton, uh, San Lorenzo Valley. Uh, San Lorenzo Valley High School. And then one of the things, since people are getting tight calves, you know, maybe as they shift to some of these drills, uh, some people, one person mentioned uh, uh, splints. So I'm sure it's something you've come across, so many runners. What, what do you recommend for people, like when they start to experience those, back off the running, but what are some things you, you do to help people with the shin splints or, you know, things like that? Uh, so there's a good stretch you can do. The, the main thing with shin splints or a classic case of shin splints, the first thing I always look at is the surface you run on. Um, Cause it's a lot of times it's because you're running on too much concrete um, or pavement uh, that impact. Okay. If you've just can't gotten into running uh, that's, that's a, I see a lot of shin splints and people that are new to running. Um, the, the look at the surface and the shoes you're the shoes again are key um, if you're on a good pair that may be a, a signal to get a new pair of shoes old shoes are not good old shoes lose their rebound effect okay and and it's like it's like a stale beer it's, you don't want to you don't want to do it you don't want to do it <laughs> um, this exercise okay look go ahead and line your back so what I'm gonna have Jeremy do is line his back put his feet up and then just kind of rotate your, okay. This, what this does is it helps strengthen your anterior tibialis, which is the muscle on the front of the shin. And that's the muscle that's basically what's happening in the shin, classic shin splint is it's pulling away from the bone. So this, now go the other way. You can like, you can spell your name. You can just kind of, I have them roll 
this way, roll this way, or just go up and down, up and down, rest up and down. So you're basically dorsiflex, plantar flex, dorsiflex, plantar flex, okay? And that's gonna create a little bit of a burn in his shin, but what it's doing is it's strengthening that anterior tibialis on that, on that bone. So that's a good, it's basically like a stretch, but it's actually a strengthening for, the, for that classic, what's classic shin splint. I hear people say shin splints a lot, and it's not a shin splint. It could be a stress fracture. It could be something else. So classic shin splints usually get you, a lot of times it's on both sides, and it's right on the shin, up and down the shin. It's, it's, it's pretty, that's what a classic shin splint is. If your pain is up here in the knee, that's not a shin splint. You know, it's, if it's in the back of the Achilles, that's not a shin splint, okay? But a classic shin splint, that's a good one to do. Got it. Cool. And then I think, like you said, just being mindful of, you know, uh, using the roller, whether it's a stick or a foam roller, loosening up the anterior tibialis. Abs. You, uh, you really need to spend at least 10 to 15 minutes a day rolling and stretching to really – you know, and if you can do a yoga class once a week, you know, that's all. This is all stuff Jeremy's doing in the next two years to get that sub four. Yeah. <laughs> Working on it. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. Oh, I got one more. What was the um, – when people are running downhill, um, obviously it's a little bit easier to stay on that midfoot or forefoot when you're running flat or uphill. When people are running downhill, is there any particular advice on how to – how to strike or keep the yeah, um it, it really depends on on the steepness of the hill because if it's a really steep hill i'm not going to tell you to run on your forefoot <laughs> you're probably going to be running on your heels more than likely and you may be doing kind of a shuffle stride so it really depends if it's if it's just slightly downhill then freaking have at it and and let use that momentum to get you into that stride and you can fly um, and get up on that forefoot but the steeper it gets that's when you're going to have to kind of you know make some adjustments because you don't want to get over your skis and end up face planting okay so you got to be careful about that but uh but yeah i would say it's otherwise you want to keep it pretty you know keep the stride the same but just as the as the steepness gets you know greater you gotta you're gonna have to adjust understood okay yeah i think it's uh one of those things that some of those different drills you talked about and even just getting comfortable on a downhill helps these helps people understand like what their foot turnover speed can be right as if they practice it uh, yeah i was just gonna say like something that i do during my races um i think it's really important to be like mindful of how fast you know your legs can move and for me personally i uh think that i have a really fast turnover so going down hills, if I think that I'm going to be able to distance myself from the someone behind me, then I will try to just go on my forefoot and make myself run very fast down that hill and not try to put the brakes on. But you, I think that's just because I know like how fast my legs will be able to move. So you have to be Don't really mind, you have to be mindful of uh, how fast your cadence can can be. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the key takeaways from this whole thing is is remember that 180 number and and see where you're at okay if you're up over 180 if you're in the 180 to 185 you're good okay if you're 175 or below you're not good okay you need to work on that um because you're probably over striding and again that that cadence yeah and so i think that it definitely shift because i remember I did that, and that was really hard going around that track, counting those freaking strikes over and over. Yeah. Um, but it was fantastic and completely changed how I run. So just to reiterate that, as you're going around the track, you're just trying to count the, the strikes. And after like a uh, after 30 seconds, you're multiple by two, or after 60 seconds, you've got your total. Is that correct? Yeah. And you can do it. You can do it on a track. You can do it out on just out on the road. Just watch. Look at your watch and just count your right foot you know, for 30 seconds and times it by two. Got it. And I can pretty much guarantee almost everyone watching this that you're going to find that you're overstriding. And you're gonna, it's going to feel weird to, like, bring your, your stride in smaller. But um, what Pete talked about a lot, which I hope was, like, the theme you guys uh, are getting from this, is 
a lot of these drills are helping you become a more efficient runner because if you can conserve your energy and you're, you're running like a proper way, then you can run a little bit longer. You can run a little bit better. And to be honest, it makes running enjoyable, right? Because I know some of the people watching are like, I want to be a better runner. Well, I, I think I said that in the, uh, at the start where some people, they, you see them running and they don't look like they're having much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you again for everything. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys watching at home got some great tips from uh, Pete and Jeremy. In the comments below, I'm going to put uh, Pete's information. I'll tag him in the post and then also put uh, a link to his website, Cane Performance. He is an excellent, excellent coach. So for any of you that are trying to train for uh, multi-sport or just okay, – My email is Pete at Kane Performance, K-A-I-N performance.com. You can just email me if questions or whatever. Yep, and I'll put, I'll put all that in the comments, guys. But if you guys have any – questions on that uh, or connecting with Pete for coaching as it relates to running, biking, uh, sorry, running, cycling, or swimming. He's the man to go to. And uh, who knows, one of these days we'll figure out a physically stuff that we can do live together one of these days. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks.